Welcome to Special Stage and welcome to Minehead in Somerset for round three of the RIS Get Connected 1400 Rally Championship. Matt Smith in the Ford KA is not here this weekend to push Julian Wilkes as he has done for the previous two rounds. So can Darren Pinchin or Roger Priestnell or any other of the contenders in the 1400 Championship keep Wilkes honest in that Nova this weekend? Who knows? What we can tell you is the action will be fast paced and the best 1400 Rally action you will see on the TV. Let's go to the stages right now for round three. With another large entry gathered for round three of the BTRDA 1400 Rally Championship, the scene was set for battle to recommence in the forest of Exmoor. And heading the field after the opening two stages are Julian Wilkes Shoot, and Will Rutherford in. Child on their home event. Go on. Turn six left, carry, cut. 60. 60. Five left over bumps, cut. And don't cut, two left flat over small crest. Don't cut, 60. Two left, don't cut. And turn three left, don't cut. Logs inside, unseen, small crest. 100, five left. And turn seven right. Into the flat three left. 60. Flat three right. 60, stay right, turn hairpin left, bail inside. In second and on unfamiliar territory are Roger Priestnell and Jamie Forrest. The pair making the long trip south from Yorkshire to compete here and it was going well at this early stage. Another Yorkshire crew travelling all those miles to the West Country are Ash Lights and Matt Wattam. They hold third just nine seconds off the pace at the front. Dan Evans and Christopher Ridge make a return to the series having missed the Malcolm Wilson. They get off to a good start in fourth. And joining them in that fourth place, dead level on time are Darren Pinching and Karen Watts. Long one thirty, then don't cut, hairpin left, tight end, bail inside, repeat, don't cut, bail inside. Titans into four right. Forty, six left long, watch, one right. So six left long into one right, Titans, deceptive, watch this one. So one right, deceptive, Titans, and round again. Five right opens long. And In sixth, it's Clive Anstey and Tim Curry. Clive still making adjustments and setting up that Nova as the season unfolds. Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham stop the clocks at the end of stage two, completely level on time, with the Nova pairing in front, giving them joint sixth. These short stages really making the results too close to call at this early stage. In eighth are Gino Cook and Tudor Jenkins. This car has a bit of history as well within the BTRDA 1400 series, having won with previous champions Ian Evans and Graham Middleton. First of the 1400 C crews are Chris Hellings and Glenn Thomas. They hold a comfortable ninth overall in the MG. And rounding off our top 10 are Vin Hughes and Kevin Booth in the Ford Focus. Having put in a very late entry for the event, Nigel Jenkins and Kevin Watkins would have a disaster of a rally when they break a drive shaft in stage one, over almost as fast as it started for the pair. And it would be yet another rally with no luck for Sean Matthews and Griff Parry. They retire their escort at the end of stage two with yet more engine woes. Looking at the rally first category now, and it will be familiar names at the top in the form of Joe Evett and Calvin Holdsworth. Hard on their tail, just seven seconds down are James West and Steve Eggington. They'll be looking to score some good points here to extend their championship lead. So this was a great start for the pair. In third, we find Justin Fowler Bishop and Tudor Reed. Going well for the pair and keeping things close with the top three leading crews. Enjoying a clean run through the opening two stages here are Rory Jones and Tom Hughes in fourth. Their season had been mixed, it's fair to say, so this was a good confidence boost here at round three. In fifth and first of the one-litre rally first crews are Mick Smith with Paul Osmond alongside. And just one second back in sixth are Ian Arden and Siobhan Pugh in the micro.
third of the one litre crews and seventh rally first to Niall Moroni and Elgin Davies. They lie just six seconds back from the one litre class leaders, setting up a good class battle then for the rally. In eighth place is former junior driver Reese Price with Mike Joad alongside. And Carl Davies with experienced co-driver Ashley Trimble take ninth after two stages, but they are unfortunately forced to retire after the stage. So completing our top 10 at this stage are Bart Lang and Simon Cox. Two stages down, and a reminder here of how the results are shaping up here at round three. After a further five stages around the Exmoor National Park, including two runs of the infamous Pollock Toll Road, Julian Wilkes and Will Rutherford Child have extended their lead to 50 seconds. This gives them a comfortable margin with four stages remaining, but as we know, nothing is ever decided until the final time control. All changed through the rest of the field now as we find Darren Pynchon and Karen Watts sitting in second place. Their advance up the results looking good for some points this weekend. And moving up to a podium position now are Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham in third. Tipped by Wilkes as an up-and-coming driver, the pace was really showing this weekend. Just one second back in fourth are Dan Evans and Chris Ridge. Some great times from the youngster on only his second ever rally. Certainly following in his dad's footsteps in this 1400 championship. Dropping down a few places to fifth are Roger Priestnell and Jamie Forrest. Nevertheless, they lie just three seconds down on that final podium place and certainly not out of the running yet. Dropping a few seconds on the tarmac stage are Ash Slights and Matt Wattam in sixth. Still getting to grips with the new car as well and of course, the setup on any new car, always a challenge. Another crew to drop some time up the slippery tarmac of Paul Ocker, Clive Anstey and Tim Curry now in seventh. Entering our top 10 here on the leaderboard for the first time now with the Welsh pairing of Eurus Evans and Dylan Lewis in the Proton. These stages see us lose our 1400C class leaders Chris Hellings and Glyn Thomas due to head casket failure. But it would unfortunately be damaged caused by this impact with a tree in stage 5 that caused the fault, not mechanical failure. A shame for the pair who had been going well up to this point as well. Taking the 1400C class lead now then are the father and son pairing of Freddie and Dave Brick. Dave of course more used to the driver's seat himself, passing on his knowledge this weekend. And still sitting comfortably in that 10th place are Vin Hughes and Kevin Booth in the focus. I'm just glad I've done those two at Porlock. We've, we've had quite a traumatic morning. Two punches this morning on the two Croydon tests. They were only six miles and three and a half, but it was really difficult because at the end of the stage, having to change a wheel, and then at the end of the next stage, having to try and do it or just try and go on the road section. So for us, it was like quite traumatic. Quite traumatic, but you are the Sebastian Loeb of the 1400 Championship. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> the things always happen better for you guys. Now, how's it going at the front, though? You've, you're leading this championship. Matt's not here to push you this time. Are the others having a good crack at it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a massive scrap behind me. Um, Dan Evans, Ian's, Ian's boy, um, who I used to sort of compete with back in 2006 and 7. Um, he's out and he's real quick. He's only 21 and he's mixing it for second or third. Um, Darren's right up there. They're, they're all pushing hard. Uh, I'm staggered we took the time we did on the two Croydons with, with the punchers, but um, I guess I do know the stages quite well. Well, keep going. We'll see you later in the event. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. Seven stages down. You're in second place so far, Darren. Yeah. It's going well so far, it has to be said. Yeah, it's been good. Um, you know, a bit of a wake-up call this morning. Things are sort of, uh, haven't been out for a while, so it was a bit like, whoa. But, yeah, no, we've done some bits and bobs to the car, um, suspension and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good so far, yeah. It's been going well. Can you make up the difference over the next few stages is the burning question. That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, no, I don't think we will. Um, 
But if he obviously is, if he has any problems, we'll be there. But no, well, we'll try. We'll push on a bit this afternoon. We, we need to push on a bit because Roger's quite close. So it'd be nice to just put a bit more gap between us if it's possible. Kaz was saying that you enjoy these stages. You had fun on those last few. Yeah, I do love it here. Yeah, I know some people reckon it's really rough and don't like it. But I just love it because it's tarmac and, and the gravel. So it's a bit of everything. It's good fun. Harry, third overall after two stages in the 1400s, going pretty well here yeah. at Somerset. Yeah, it's going well so far, really enjoying it. Uh, a little bit tricky this morning getting used to like the loose gravel and stuff like that, but it's going well. It's a good battle hotting up now. We've got Dan one second behind us now. Um, all to play for, really. Talk about the guys up ahead, though. Two guys up ahead who Julian Wilkes will be some catch if he can get up there, but Darren Pinchin, Maybe. think you can get to that? Maybe this afternoon we'll have a good push. The, the last stage, the 10 mile, that could be where it's won or lost, so... Definitely going to keep the pressure on and, uh, yeah, enjoy the day, definitely. Well, win or lose, we'll see you at the finish. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, with Matt Smith absent in the Ford car this weekend here in Somerset, this man, Darren Pinchin, is the closest thing to chasing Wilkes down in that Nova. But can he do it? Stay tuned to Special Stage. We'll bring you all the action and we'll give you the answer to that burning question. No change at the top of the rally first table, Joe Evert and Calvin Holdsworth holding a comfortable lead of over a minute now. In second is another MG, this time is the crew of Justin Fowler Bishop, Tudor Rees alongside. And making it an MG top three are Rory Jones and Tom Hughes, despite a couple of moments in stage four they survive to make it back to service in that podium position. Mick Smith and Paul Osmond hold fourth and continue to lead the one litre rally first cruise. But just five seconds adrift in fifth place are Niall Moroni and Elgin Davies. They'll surely be pushing on in these final four stages looking for that first class win. In sixth place and third of the one litre crews are Ian Arden and Siobhan Pugh in the micro. And our championship leaders James West and Steve Eggington drop a considerable amount of time in stage four with an off. They lie in seventh place now but at least they're able to continue. Reese Price and Mike Joad retired their Micra in stage three with suspension troubles. And entering our top 10 leaderboard now in ninth are Chris Hickman and Peter Williams. The last of our rally first crews here in ninth, it's Bart Lang with Simon Cox on the notes. Joe, this year hasn't been as good as last year for you so far. But you're leading rally first there here in Somerset, so it's going well so far today. Yeah, um, we had a puncher on the first stage and then hit a bail on the fourth or fifth stage, I think. But apart from that, it's going well. The bail probably helped you, did it? Looking at the side of the car? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We were coming to a chicane. I was going to get it stopped, so it just slid straight into it. And we winded it up for James, so it made it better for him. <laughs> Fine. Bales are in the armoury for rally drivers. That's all right. Yeah, well, good luck for the rest of the rally. We will catch up with you later. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> So with a further four challenging stages completed in the forest surrounding Minehead, this is how our final rally first results were decided. In ninth, in their one litre micro, are Bart Lang and Simon Cox. Great result for them. Chris Hickman and Peter Williams bring their car back to the finish in one piece to finish in eighth place. And seventh for Ian Arden and Siobhan Pugh after a tough day was a good result and the pair just glad of a finish. Next big step entrance, Niall Moroni and Elgin Davies have to settle for 6th rally first, but take away 2nd of the 1 litre crews. 
Mick Smith and Paul Osmond come away with another fantastic class victory, as well as joint fourth place. And joining them on exactly the same time after 45 miles of stage competition are James West and Steve Eggington. Some good points for our Rally First Championship leaders. Rory Jones and Tom Hughes take away a credible third after a few problems throughout the day. And second of our Rally First crews securing their best result yet are Justin Fowler-Bishop and Tudor Rees. Making a return to winning ways though are the delighted pair of Joe Evert and Calvin Holsworth, rightly so as well. Their first maximum point score since the 2012 Nicky Griss stages. Joe, I'd quite like to say it's, it's more normal seeing you in this sort of position. Well done, <laughs> rally first victory. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, taken a little while, but third time lucky this year. <laughs> um, yeah, we wanted the win, so we pushed hard all the way. Um, Things have gone your way car-wise as well. Yeah, we had a puncture first stage. Uh, we pulled the back bumper off. We pulled the front bumper <laughs> off. The exhaust has just been knocked off. Um, we had an engine management light all day, but I just put a bit of tape over that so I fix that one. And now you've got a head to post event scrutineering where they're going to say you were weight saving with nothing on the car. <laughs> yeah, no, we've just been there. They did diff a diff test, but we passed that all right. So happy days. Excellent. Well done. Good victory. And uh, you'll be hoping for the same next time out, I'm sure. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, it's the planes. Yeah, looking, for, looking forward to it now then. <laughs> Don't forget when we get there, will you? No, I try not to. <laughs> Cheers, Joe. Cheers. So with the Rally First crews done and dusted, here's how the top of the 1400 leaderboard looks. Sadly, we lose Vin Hughes and Kevin Booth on stage eight when they go off the road. Fortunately, both of the crew members okay. We lose another crew who looked set for a good result as well, and that's Freddie and Dave Brick. They retire with a broken drive shaft, also in stage eight. And so onto the final leaderboard now, and taking 10th would be Northern Irishman Chris Farrell with local co-driver Andy Ballantyne on the notes. Ninth overall and second of the 1400 C crews are Rob Hansford and Daniel Scott in the MG. But taking the 1400C class win and 8th overall are James Alexander and Arwell Jenkins. A strong result considering this is James' first event in over a year. In 7th we find the familiar pair of Eurus Evans and Dylan Lewis in that Proton. And in 6th place another Proton, Roger Priestnell and Jamie Forrest. Not the result they were hoping for this weekend but nevertheless, a good points finish. And it's all about the championship at this stage. Let's not forget that. Just two seconds up the road are Clive Anstey and Tim Curry in fifth. Quick time through the final 11 mile stage sees them move up a couple of places. And Ash Slights with Matt Wattam alongside head back to Yorkshire with a fine fourth place finish and some strong points for their 2013 campaign. Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham leave Somerset amid celebrations with their best 1400 result to date, third overall, as well as fastest time on the final long stage through Croydon Forest. Some encouraging pace for the forthcoming rounds even if the pair did look like they'd competed in the Dakar, with all of the dust building up inside the car. After a disappointing wide in rally and having missed the Malcolm Wilson, Darren Pinchin and Karen Watts would be delighted to head home with second of the 1400 crews here. Some luck finally coming their way. But taking another convincing victory are the unfathomable pairing of Julian Wilkes and Will Rutherford Child. The crew even having some time for a bit of showing off at this hairpin in the final stage, giving our camera the thumbs up and a little honk on the horn. So with round three complete, here's a reminder of how the results were decided in round three at the BTRDA 1400 Rally Championship. Once again, well done, Julian and Will. Fantastic result here at the Somerset Stages. It's been a tough day for you all in all with the problems you've had. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it's been a good day. We, we got here, we got here first. Um, but yeah, this afternoon was just damage limitation. It's it's really rough out there, but everyone's enjoyed it. It's, it's, they're great stages, but they're very, very rough. We, we, we came up a hill um, and in the middle of the road was, was a big old stone about the size of a basketball and there was nowhere to go and we just had to drive over it and it launched the car in the air. And we, we've had moments that I've almost thought are going to get, you know, the car ain't going to last. But other than that, it's been great. Will's been great on the notes. Um, Pro, the Proflex is fantastic. Dunlop's fantastic. So, yeah, I've had a really great day. Darren Kaz, fantastic to have you back in the BTRDA and what a result to come back in with as well. Second, well done. Yeah, no, it's great. We, uh, put, you know, got, got it together a bit more this afternoon, put some decent times in and uh, it made a bit of a difference. You know, a bit, a bit rusty this morning, but uh, no, I enjoyed it this afternoon. It's been really good and it's great to be here, really. Karen, I know you did an event with Nigel as well recently, didn't you? And you've, you've ruined his drive shaft for him, so he hasn't finished, but you guys have had a great result today. I know, we're really happy. Darren's drove spot on today. It has been really good. I mean, the stage race, love Porlock. That last stage was just absolutely brilliant. It was just brilliant. It just felt like a kangaroo. <laughs> Fair to say you've not had the best of luck over the last year or maybe even a bit longer with the car with reliability and, yeah. and everything else. So it's good to see you out there fighting and uh, having the reliability with the car and getting the results as well. Yeah, no, that's cool. No, it's been, I've, you know, today you never know, dear. Last year when you have a DNF, it always haunts you. And every time you go around that corner that you stopped on last, you keep thinking, oh, no, it's not that corner again. But no, you know, the car's been great. We've, we've done some mods to the car. Um, we're running on Dunlops now. We've changed the tyre size, and that's made a hell of a difference to the car uh, in the drivability of it. And uh, so, and suspension, you know, we've modified a bit on that. So it's been good. Well done, both of you. Fantastic result. Thank you very much. Thank you. Harry Elliott, you look more like you've done the Dakar as opposed to the Somerset stage, just looking at the dust on you. It feels like it, definitely, yeah. The, the car was just filling up with dust towards the end of that last stage, but it's really good, um, good result. Julian said, you know, push for, to get third on the, um, it was a big battle with Roger Priest and all Ashley Slides, and it was brilliant to get the, the fastest time on the last stage and get the third overall, the first time on the podium in the Super 1400s, yeah. So Absolutely, yeah, it just come in a little bit. Good rally, have you enjoyed it apart from getting covered in dust and looking like you've had to work on the car in stage? Yeah, fantastic. Harry's got it down to a T pretty much now. Um, let's say it's just a bit of a killer through the 10 milers with the dust all coming in the carts, oh, you know, and yeah, it's good. It's been absolutely brilliant. It has, uh, I'd say the car's performed well and yeah, it's been brilliant. It's really good. Yeah, definitely. Suspension tyres, we're getting it all right now. It's so. been an interesting leaderboard as well to be fighting in today, hasn't it? Because everybody's here. The entries Everyone. are here. It, you know, it's so close, really. You know, Julian, even with a couple of punches, he still can't catch him. Um, but, you know, it, it, there was Dan, Ashley, a handful of seconds between them. It's getting so close. Got in a good championship. Um, the person obviously missing was Matt in the, in the yeah, KA. in the KA. So it would be interesting he's going to come back and hopefully we can get, you know, close to him now or even beat him. So looking forward to it, yeah. A word of advice, guys, before you have your winner's photos, you look like you're wearing makeup, so get this dust cleaned off. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Thanks. Bring on the planes. That's all we've got time for here in Minehead in Somerset from round three of the REIS Get Connected BTRDA 1400 Championship. Julian Wilkes and Will Rutherford Child still come out on top, but look at this top three. Darren Pynchon and Harry Gardner also here in the top three. This championship is hotting up. We're looking forward to the planes round four. Join us then here on Special Stage.